I have memories of people who don't exist. It started with Kyle. We were going to meet up later that morning for a gaming session, but I had something at work come up and couldn't make it. I called Kyle's cell phone to tell him of the news, but it went straight to an answering machine with an automated voice telling me, the number you have called has not been recognized. That's odd, I thought to myself, as he changed numbers. Surely he would have messaged to tell me that by now. I was late for work, as usual, and so resolved to drop by Kyle's apartment on the way home. In hindsight, I should have went straight to him. Kyle is the type of person to be a hand's reach away from a phone at all times. I should off realize that something was off. But I didn't. I instead went to work, I had to get that sweet paycheck after all. After my shift, I drove the short 10 minute journey to his apartment. He lived on the 5th floor, almost at the top of the building. And of course, today the elevator wasn't working. I sighed and began trudging up the steps until I got to his floor. I quickly looked for the metal plated numbers, 501, signifying his apartment was behind that door. I walked over to it and knocked at the door. Who is it? A female voice answered. Who is that? Well, Kyle had mentioned having a girlfriend before. This must be her. It's Kyle's friend, Daniel. I replied. I don't know any Kyle. Are you sure you have the right address? She doesn't know Kyle and she's in his apartment. That doesn't make any sense. The door suddenly opened and a woman who appeared to be in her mid-twenties stepped out. The numbering system this place has going on is confusing at best. Kyle probably lives one floor up or down. She said with a smile. I'm pretty sure this is the place. I have been here many times after all. Dot 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 you mean to my apartment. I looked past her shoulder and into her apartment, and it looked like Kyle had never stepped foot in the place. There were way more decorations and colors, and overall the place was just tidier. You know what? Never mind. You're probably right. I smiled and walked away. What is going on? First the phone number and now this. Where's Kyle? As I walked down the stairs I called Kyle's sister, who picked up almost straight away. I had met her at a small party and we had hit it off almost instantly. The relationship only lasted a couple of months, but we had parted on friendly terms and still kept in touch every so often. Daniel, how are you? Hey, Meg, sorry to bother you. I just wanted to see if you know where Kyle is as I haven't been able to reach him, and he seems to have moved out of his apartment. Who? Kyle dot 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 your brother. I don't have any siblings. What are you talking about? I'm talking about your brother. Is this meant to be a joke? If so, it's not funny. What the hell? She doesn't remember her own brother. What is going on today? I'm not joking. I yell at her. Listen, Daniel, I've got to go. We can continue this stupid conversation later. I put the phone down with a sigh. This was getting too weird for me. This has to be a prank Kyle set up. Yeah, that's what it is. Just a big, elaborate prank. He's probably waiting for me back at home, laughing his head off. Let's go there now. I quickly hopped in my car and practically sped to my house, telling myself all the way there about how creative this prank was, making me think I've lost my mind. I grab my keys and open the front door dot 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 and there's no one else there but my roommate, Eric. He's a slightly overweight engineering major who would rather die than help clean. But he's a great guy to be with and I enjoy his company. Eric, has Kyle come by here at all today? Who? Look if this is some sort of prank all of my friends know about except me, can you just stop it right now? Man, I have no idea what you are talking about. Okay, fine don't tell me then. I storm out of the living room and make my way to my bedroom. I flop down on my bed. Let's just get some sleep, everything will be better in the morning. How wrong I was. As usual, when I woke up the next day, I went to the kitchen to make myself breakfast. Eric wasn't there which was strange as he usually wakes up before me. I looked outside and his car wasn't there. Confused, I called his phone. The number you have called has not been recognized. Came the automated reply. What the heck? I ran back to his room. Everything he owned. Gone. I went through the entire house. There wasn't a trace of Heim left. Even the hole in the wall he made when moving a chair was gone. A smooth section of wall in its place. It was like he never even existed. I couldn't take it anymore. I slumped against a wall and started crying. The last time I had cried was at my grandmother's funeral, and even then I had kept my composure. Now, the tears fell freely. I must have sat sobbing there for at least an hour before my phone vibrated. It was Meg. She had texted, do you want to chat about yesterday? I did want to chat. Yes, what were you going on about, then? Do you remember Eric? What? My roommate. I thought you lived alone. Well I suppose I do now, seeing as how he's gone. Are you okay? Is everything alright? Was I? My life was crumbling before my eyes. People who had existed one day, simply vanished the next. And nobody else seemed to realize. I'm fine. I said, even though I was not. Alright then, see you soon. Bye. The truth was, I was scared. Scared that people were vanishing without a trace. Scared that more people might too. I was scared that I was going insane. But most of all, I was scared that I was next.